Mheshimiwa Rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta Mheshimiwa Raila Odinga Waziri mkuu wetu wa zamani Ndugu yetu Mheshimiwa Kabudi Waziri wa mambo za kigeni kutoka Tanzania The chairman of the Building Bridges Initiative Task Force and your members, Your Excellencies Ambassadors, Fellow Leaders, and Kenyans, good afternoon. I'm Jambo. I will not attempt to speak Kiswahili today because I do not command enough vocabulary <laughs> to measure up to the standards that have been set. Therefore, I will restrict uh, my English. This is yet another historic moment as we write a new chapter for our nation. Today, as Kenyans, we have come together from all shades to have a conversation about our present and to project into our future. I want to thank you, Your Excellency, and former Prime Minister for the courage that you had and the patriotism that you displayed when you decided <laughs> that it is time for us as Kenya, democratic as we are, belonging to different parties as we, as we do, but to also have a conversation, not talking at each other, but talking to and with each other. And this is the moment, Your Excellency, that your initiative with Raila Odinga has brought us to. I want to say, as a leader in Kenya, that this moment of uniting Kenya that has become part of your politics will go down in the history of our nation that you went out of your way in every turn and in every occasion to bring this nation together. A very big chapter of your legacy will be around uniting the country. And Your Excellency, we want to say we want to thank God for this occasion. And we want to thank you and the former Prime Minister for doing this, not for yourselves, but for us, the 47 million Kenyans. Your Excellency, the document and the proposals and the recommendations that have been put together by this able team will form the basis for a national conversation. A conversation, Your Excellency, where there is no greater or smaller person. There is no superior or inferior opinion that all of us, as citizens of Kenya, can air our views openly, frankly, so that we can have an informed conversation. Your Excellency, I 
as we look forward to this moment, it is important for all of us to know where we are, how we got ourselves here, and what are the options for us going into the future. I am very happy that the document, the recommendations, and the proposals that have been put forward that will form the basis of our discussion to a good extent, Your Excellency, informs us on how to build institutions to get our politics away from personalities and ethnicities to institutions that will carry all of us irrespective of who we are, where we come from, the language we speak, or the political party we subscribe to. Your Excellency, the building of these institutions stems from the position that all of us, irrespective of who we are, irrespective of the power we wield, we must submit ourselves to the rule of law. That all of us, to be able to build institutions, we must submit ourselves to the rule of law. We must respect institutions that have been set up. And I am happy that there are proposals on how to build and enhance the institutions of governance, that we will have a robust, maybe constitutional, opposition that will make sure that government is held to account. And that in a contest, there will be no losers or winners, that everybody ultimately will have a role to play, whether you are in government or in the opposition, in taking our country forward. Your Excellency, therein are proposals on how to manage all our other affairs, including positions and power. But as earlier speakers have said, we must be careful that we do not, this process is not hijacked by the political class and be made a subject of sharing positions or sharing power alone. This process must not address the divide between the politicians only. It must address the divide, the huge divide between the haves and the have-nots, between the people who have jobs and the millions of young people who are unemployed. We must, as a matter of course, and as a priority, make sure that this document speaks to the majority of Kenyans, their fears, their aspirations, their challenges, and look for their solutions. I am very confident that we have what it takes to make sure that we make the best of this document. Your Excellency, as this process moves to the next stage, majority of the issues, and I have to a good extent read the report last evening, majority of the issues that were canvassed by Kenyans were about ordinary people, jobs, businesses, our agriculture, 
And Your Excellency, you have set a perfect program under the Big Four program that will sort out our farmers, agro-processing, value addition, manufacturing, the whole housing program that will give us jobs for our young people. As we embark on this process, Your Excellency, we should accelerate the Big Four program so that in it we can also sort out some of the challenges that were enlisted under the proposals that were made by BBI. Your Excellency, going into the future, I want to agree with the leaders who have said that all of us as Kenyans must read this document for ourselves. We must interrogate. And the processes going into the future, I want to persuade us that from here going into the future, we should avoid a costly, potentially divisive, controversial processes that will divide us. It is possible for us to build consensus and arrive at the destination together, not divided. Therefore, members of parliament, members of the Senate, I think to a great extent, the job has been well cut out for you on what you should do in parliament, in terms of legislation, in terms of constitutional uh, changes, but that must be informed by millions of Kenyans, their views, their aspirations, and their comments. With those many remarks, ladies and gentlemen, let me now take this opportunity to invite the former Prime Minister, the Honorable, Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga.